as the Mountain of Moses or Jabal Musa in Arabic is situated on the Sinai Peninsula of Egypt and is believed to be the place where, according to the Torah, the Bible and Quran, Moses received the Ten Commandments. It is one of four sacred mountains in the Middle East with the Mount Ararat in eastern Turkey, Mount Moriah and Mount Tabor in Israel, rounding off the list of summits which have rich historical and spiritual significance. Now, Citizen TV's Agnes Olo recently scaled the pilgrim and tourist site of Mount Sinai, and this was her experience. <laughs> Oh God, the topmost. We are getting ready for an over 210 kilometer journey that begins with approximately a five hour drive by road from Sharm el Sheikh, the Egyptian resort town, to the Sinai Peninsula. The weather conditions in Egypt can be punishing. It can be extremely hot during the day. And at night, the weather can unpredictably be chilling to the extremes. Formation will be tomorrow morning. Now you have to wake up to be active to climb mountain directly when we... At 1 a.m., we arrive at the foot of the world-famous Sinai Mountain. It is extremely cold here, a fact that many of us had not taken into account. We have no choice but to quickly look for a few extra dollars to purchase warmer attire. How many dollars? <laughs> we are the gates. We are entering the Sinai, the seven kilometers climb. For us, if you back directly here, you will lost me and you will lost the car and you will make a big problem for me. That's why we have to meet tomorrow morning inside Manistee. You can't, you can't please. Please. What's a group? Yes. Yes. We begin the five hour climb to the peak of the mountain. The nighttime hike takes us on a serene path under the stars. Hundreds of pilgrims and tourists make their way to the summit at their own pace. We make our first stop at this cafe. We've covered 3.5 kilometers now. Really enthusiastic. I can't wait. Uh, this is Mahmoud Wedrawa from Burkina Faso. Um, uh, we are here and uh, they uh, and they take uh, some coffee. That's small energy to finish our work. Our name is Nita. I'm from Burkina Faso. I thank you girls because you are giving me hope. You are encouraging me to go to the last step. Where? You okay? The second phase of this thrilling trek comes after the 15-minute break. For those who are too worn out, the option of riding a camel to the top is also available. So what are we going to do on top? At around 4.30 a.m., we take another break as we gaze at the sun's rays. We are informed that we are a kilometer away from the mountain peak, an achievement that must be shared with all. Greatest achievement, I've never been on the top of any mountain. This is my first one and I'm excited. I can't wait to finish. What's happening? Finally, we make it to our destination at 5.30 a.m. Oh, God, the topmost. The excitement here is palpable. It's amazing. <laughs> here we get an opportunity to relax and marvel at the rising sun in all its splendor as it radiates across the landscape. This mountain holds a special place for Jews, Muslims and Christians. 
Engineer Stevens Yoka. From Kenya. How was your night? It was fine. Traveling overnight to come and see where Moses uh, was given the law. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to be around here. And I'm Esther Gashanja. I come from Nairobi, Kenya. 12 hours of walking. No eating, no drinking, hmm. dressing like Eskimos to avoid the breeze on top of the mountain. Uh, but we have really enjoyed. I've seen a psychomo tree, which I always read in the Bible. I've seen Mount Sinai, I read from the Bible. And I've seen how hard it costed Moses to keep the law of God. After the sunrise, we started to descend. It took us three hours to get back to ground zero. Every step along this mountain range leads us from one historic site to the next. At the foot of Mount Sinai lies St. Catherine's Monastery, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. St. Catherine is said to have been beheaded for championing Christianity. Later, it is believed that a monk got a vision of her body being carried by angels to the peak of Mount Sinai, Hence, the establishment of the Orthodox Church at the foot of the mountain. <laughs> Around the structure is this thorny bush, which is said to be an offshoot of the biblical burning bush, the manifestation of God when he first spoke to Moses. The Greek monastery complex covers approximately 100 hectares. It was founded between 548 and 565 AD, making it one of the oldest surviving Christian monasteries. Next to the Christian church is a mosque, symbolic of the religious tolerance here. Prayers take place in this basilica, which is adorned with priceless artifacts, many of which are said to be over 100 years old. This icons showing you the story. Here is a display of 15 valuable and sacred paintings, such as Moses receiving the Ten Commandments and the burning bush. Every other year, an estimated 50,000 Christians, Jews and Muslims make their pilgrimage to the St. Catherine Monastery. The trip was very fulfilling. I had an opportunity to walk through the path through which Moses went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. It has been excellent. Uh, those camel rides. It is the oldest functioning one in the world, situated in the Sinai Peninsula. Along the monastery of St. Anthony, which is located across the Red Sea, in the desert of South Cairo, and its origins can be traced back over 17 centuries. Religious researchers, archaeologists, documentary producers and scholars have however differed as to the route of the Israelite exodus from Egypt to Canaan and whether this mountain is the exact one that was recorded in the Bible. Mount Sinai was at one time under Israeli administration as it was one of the sticky issues which led to the 1967 to 1979 war between Israel and Egypt. The territorial war lasted six days. When peace prevailed, then the Sinai Peninsula was returned to the Egyptians. It has become an important pilgrimage and tourist site for Egypt, despite the fact that Egypt and her neighbor Saudi Arabia both claim to host the real mountain of God.